You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, I'm talking with Dan Nelson about family, about genealogy, about understanding what's where we came from and who our family dynamic is you know a lot of us really don't know a lot of those answers to those questions we might know our immediate family like our brothers and sisters mother father you know grandma grandpa even maybe great grandmother or great grandfather but a lot of us might not even know that information you know dan i know that you go back as far as the historical reference to examine this information and find this information and i'm sure that you've probably found yourself in the civil war times have there been any interesting, well, any interesting uh, stories about um, the past and even something that maybe people would cringe about? Because I think sometimes we have some of those amazing stories. It's like, oh, so-and-so invented this, the telegraph, or this happened. But not every story is always awesome, awesome. But have you had any interesting stories from the Civil War? Yeah, there's there's been a number. You know, the Civil War was, a, uh, anytime you have wars, it creates stories, stories of heroism, stories of people getting wounded. I mean, when people used to come back, uh, from war and were wounded, they were like heroes in the town, in these small towns. Uh, one of the interesting ones I came across, and this was up in Iowa, and uh, so it was, you know, pretty well documented. Um, and I, I, I read it, and I checked it again, and I, I kept thinking I was doing something wrong or getting it wrong, but apparently this grandfather, who was a Civil War soldier, married his blood granddaughter. And, uh, of course, at first you say, ooh, you know, that's sort of yucky. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I checked it out, uh, and I called the client, and I said, you ever hear any story like this? And, of course, this is quite a ways back. You're talking Civil War times. And she said no. Um, and, of course, she had the same reaction, ooh. And uh, so I said, well, you know, let's just not assume he's a dirty old man. Let me uh, work on this a little bit. But I said, you know, it could be that she had some sort of uh, wasting disease and maybe it was a way to give her his pension income because uh, Civil War pensions could only be left to spouses. Kids didn't get them. Your friends didn't get them. Your brothers and sisters. Um, so it was a way to create, uh, you know, a, basically a lifetime income for her. And, uh, you know, if you get $12 a month, that was big money back in 1880s or 1890s, whenever this was, I'd have to look. But uh, so I went and uh, while I was working on it, she went and talked to the aunt that had good days and bad days. And the aunt had a good day. And she says, oh, yeah, that's true. She said that she was epileptic. And uh, that uh, was the reason for it. So then when I uh, sent away for their death certificates, they came back. He died of, you know, just something that gets old people. I forget what it was in particular. But she died two weeks later. So what I was hoping would be on the death certificate was a broken heart, but she died of whooping cough. Uh, So she didn't die from convulsions, at least from the epilepsy. So she never got to collect his pension uh, because of that. But I, you know, along these same lines, I ran across a lady the other day because um, Civil War widowers were highly sought after by uh, young women that were looking for an income long term because... You know, the old one foot in the grave? Well, the pension would be what they'd get out of it. And uh, so she collected uh, a pension for 38 years after her uh, husband, who was a Civil War veteran, passed away because she was quite a bit younger. So the last day she got a pension was 85 years after he served. Wow. Uh, So, yeah, the government was writing checks for a long time to to some of these uh, Civil War widows and Civil War veterans. There just weren't as many of the veterans that lived as long. That's interesting. Oh yeah, and I can see how it would be like, ooh, you know, this is this is spicy, you know. But so she basically had a disease that she was going to die. He was going to give her the money, and but then she dies two weeks. That's that's wild. And that wasn't the only intrigue in her life because uh, she was actually. When I was doing the research, I'm uh, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, okay, she was born before her parents were married, which okay, that's not unusual. That happens. But then it was like, no, she was born before her parents had met. Well, it turns out her mom uh, got her uh, got a job, you know, after she came out of the house and she was working as an upstairs maid in a wealthy doctor's house in Keokuk, Iowa, and uh, the doctor got her pregnant. And so this girl was the the product of that, um, you know, between the doctor and the, the maid. Love child. Yeah. So she never let her children uh, work outside the home. You know, they were... Uh, she was worried about that happening. But the weird thing when we did all this in the book, the, in, amongst their pictures was a picture of the doctor. So the doctor's picture's in the book. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. 
So, so, so did he raise her, or was it no, some other man that raised her? No. Uh, so the the maid, the mom, she um, married, and he adopted her as his own and raised her. So mm. if you didn't do the research, you would have never known. You'd just assume, oh, that was our oldest daughter, but the dates weren't lining up. Uh, for it to work in terms of when he came into that part of the country and things like that. So, interesting. Yeah, it was fun. There was a lot of uh, fun stuff in that family. But and this same gal's husband, he was adopted. He's the one that went back to George T. Stagg, and he had a very Western uh, sort of background. You know, more Western United States, and uh, including one of his grandpas. You know, great 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 something like that was in a shootout. In uh, in the street in front of the San Francisco courthouse. Uh, unfortunately, he lost in the shootout. Oh. Yeah, but it was, you know, mm-hmm. bunches of bullets were shot. Four of them made it into him. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, you always think, oh, some of that Wild West stuff's probably enhanced or made up. But that was a true Wild West story. And that family, you know, they knew Mark Twain and some other, you know, characters in early California. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. That's really the... That's cool. You know, on your own family genealogy, does, was there something that you really learned that really kind of was like, mm, wow, that's, that's kind of wild or you didn't know or something that, I don't know, just maybe even was a pat on the back to what you do that made you even feel good about doing this type of work? Was there something you found out? Uh, well, there's been a lot of great people and, and characters. Um, the one that's continued to challenge me that I'm still working on today, and I and I, I have not published this one chapter of my w- wife's family. Uh, her grandmother was a Franklin, and so, of course, everybody with the last name Franklin grows up hearing they're related to Benjamin Franklin, who, like George Washington, uh, well, he had offspring, but he had no supposed male offspring. You know, the line died out. He had an illegitimate son who had an illegitimate son, and that was it. But her great-great-grandfather's name, this is a mouthful, was Santorelli Sydenham Galitzin Franklin. And that name was given to him in 1827 in Mississippi by his illiterate parents. So they weren't reading, you know, the writings of Benjamin Franklin or Philadelphia Magazine or something like that. So the story had to get passed down. Well, who Santorelli, Sydenham, and Galitzin were were three uh, foreign guys that were in Paris when Benjamin Franklin was there working uh, on the Treaty of Paris. And so uh, Santorelli was an Italian count, and he's pretty well documented. Lord Sydenham's a, a, a title that moves through every generation. And then Prince Galitzin, who was a famous Russian general, and he taught Benjamin Franklin about music. So these were real people that were tied into Benjamin Franklin. And uh, so I've continued to uh, search to try and figure out. I know who his father is and supposedly who his grandfather is, but these people didn't leave a whole lot of uh, documentation. My theory is this came through uh, Santorelli's mother's side, who was a Jones, and the Jones were Mississippi um, aristocrats. And uh, that family um, came out of Philadelphia, went up and down the Gulf Coast, owned... uh, Rum, molasses, slave, sugar, you know, everything that was traded in the Gulf Coast uh, back in the day. One of the guys was an American consul, British consul, Spanish consul, French, you know, all the stuff around New Orleans. But uh, one of his brothers was John Jones. Well, John Jones was known as the father of American surgery. He was not only George Washington's doctor and attended him on his deathbed. He was Benjamin Franklin's doctor. (laughs) So I have this little sneaking theory that I don't think I'll I'll never be able to prove that it came down through the Jones side from Benjamin Franklin to John Jones to his Jones descendant niece that uh, married a Franklin and said hey well I got this story why don't you use this name neat yeah so I'm still working on that cool I like that I I gotta find out what happens on that one I feel like I'm like it's, it's kind of cool it's tracking down that story so lasting thoughts you know I know that family is really important to you, and I, I get that's part of the reason why you got in it. Um, you know, if if people were thinking about doing it, as, if there's a listener that's thinking about, hey, I want to check that out. You know, any thoughts for them, and, and why it really helps to solidify or, or to really kind of paint the picture? Well, it depends on your interest level. If you have a tremendous amount of interest, people, you know, go and get accounts on the the various. Um, companies out there that sell, you know, websites and, and, I mean, access to a website and access to records that go on, uh, you can pull in. But if you don't have that amount of interest or time um, to do that, then I would recommend that they look for a genealogist, a family historian, 
uh, to work on it for them. Of course, that's what I do. Uh, because if you don't have the passion and the interest, it's just too hard to do. You know, you just you can't force yourself to love it if you don't love it. You've just got to have, you know, a weird brain. <laughs> to get and where do people find you? Uh, so if somebody's interested in, in kind of learning more or, or hiring you, where would they find you? So they go to www.dancestorsgenealogy.com. And uh, there's all kinds of great information there on the website. There's lots of videos. There's lots of testimonials from our satisfied clients. And you just fill out the contact us. And uh, we'll be right back to you and get you in queue. Awesome, Dan. Well, I've learned so much. And so many interesting stories. I'll have to have you back on the show. That'd be great. Awesome. Well, it, wonderful time. Uh, Dan, so what's the what's the web address again? www.dancestorsgenealogy.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I look forward to having you back in studio. Great show today for all y'all listening. You know, it's all about family. It's all about connectivity. I mean, some of you have wonderful families that you really love. Some of you not so much, but some of you really do care about that lineage and knowing more information and kind of understanding from where you came. And I think that also helps us to form that that reality or that look or, or, or the picture that we want to know a little bit more about. I also think sometimes learning more about ourselves is so important about the family, but it all comes down to you. It's about learning who you are, understanding who you are, embracing who you are, letting go of those preconceived notions and those things that no longer serve you to actually find your own true perspective. I hope this show is connected with you. Please share it with your family and friends. Remember to live your true life and live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. Well, you know I'll be back this time in three shakes.